Hi everyone, Patrick Berry of 414 Property Co. and welcome to the Property Pod. Today we are flying solo without Aaron Horn. That's why I'm here on the mics intro in the show. But I do have my regular guest, John McGregor, here. Welcome, mate. I'm not going to give up this corner. This is my seat, <laughs> even if I'm sick. So I think, oh, look, who knows how it's going to pan out. I'm, I've got faith we've got this, though. Yeah, I'm this. a bit nervous. I'm over here on the actual controls, working all these little dials and knobs. And I'm going to be honest, I don't have any idea what I'm doing. But you look impressive when look, you're adjusting it, mate. So. I've got lots of flashy lights and pretty colors here so yeah, yeah. just push them all yeah. yeah someone take a photo of me because i look like i know what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> and as aaron always says fake it till you make it yeah exactly <laughs> well to make it easier though because obviously i'm not sure if you guys want to listen to john and i talk for half an hour by ourselves nah, as if you wouldn't we've managed to get another guest on the show and i'm really excited well had um so jason swinder from domain isn't it yes so that's correct. if um now he now the first episode we did was pretty loose but the second episode we did was getting better because he was our very first guest on the pod and he probably saved us Let's yeah. be honest. <laughs> uh, no, no question. Did. So I think it was sort of – he's um, pieced together some – was it the plan is that he's put together some really good – um, information relevant to our Tassie market in terms yeah, of inquiry and, and stuff. Basically looking at how this year's fared from a search result perspective, an inquiry perspective, things like that. So yeah, I yeah. think hopefully it will give us a bit of an insight as to what has happened in 2020 as far as the market goes and COVID and everything around that. Mm. So kind of interested to see where Hobart sits, I guess. Yeah, and no, see one thing that's really just interesting about statistics is We've, we're experiencing it on a daily basis, and then it's not until you've got that re- retrospective information that you can they can say, look, this is or what has been happening. Yeah. So I'm actually really interested to see if what our stories are are backed up by the data as well. Uh, what are you saying? You make up your stories, John? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess John and I could talk all day, but we should probably go to an ad and get Jason in. He's out there in reception waiting for us, so let's do this. All right, I'm in. 414 Property Co. All types of property for all types of people. At 414 Property Co., we believe that property is for everyone. White collar, blue collar, no collar, dog collar. Whoever you are, we will find the property for you. Contact 414 Property Co. at www.414.com.au. Well, welcome back, everybody, and I'm very excited to bring back our very first guest from episode number two, Mr. Jason Swindon from Domain. Welcome back. Thanks, John. Thanks, Pat. Thank you for having me. Oh, that's great. Oh, well, thank you for coming back. Yeah. Obviously, we didn't scare you too hard the first time around and yeah. we convinced you to come back. <laughs> no, not at all. Happy well, to be here. I think we've got a little bit more in control and our voices seem a little bit more settled when they did on episode number two. Um, but, I mean, the good thing is I think this time around it's for the same story, isn't it, Jace? You're going to really fill us in on what things were like now versus 12 months ago is um, with all the statistics that, that the main economists have put together. Is that right? Yeah, look, pretty much, uh, John. I've got a few bits of information here just to talk about um, what's been happening in our local market and versus our, our statewide market this time last year and, and this time this year obviously it's been a pretty big year for all of us pretty crazy year as well i'm interested to hear how that's affected the industry obviously we felt like it's been pretty busy but it'd be interesting to see the numbers and what they result in yeah and i think everyone's got their own stories too and i think now it'd be interesting we're like oh look there's not enough properties for sale or there's a lot more buyers well it's like well we've all got our own anecdotal s- stories but what's the how is that actually playing out with numbers now yeah look it's mm. um it's an interesting one because listings themselves are down there's not as much stock around it okay. as what we saw um, this time last year. Mm. So it's creating a bit of a, a supply and demand issue in most areas um, of Tassie. You know, to, for you guys here locally, um, out here in that Glenorchy LGA, the listings themselves are down roughly around 6%. So not a, not a huge amount, but when you break that down from a statewide point of view, we're down roughly about 20% overall. Oh, wow. Um, that's a lot of properties numbers. across the entire state. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. So that's obviously a sign that people aren't quite ready to move. They're just playing this year a little bit safe and just staying where they are by the sound of it. Yeah, look, it's um, it's an interesting one. We've, we've tracked right through that kind of COVID period, you know, and we, we go back to um, March, April. April, May, where things really hit us and, um, you know, that the tap was turned off for a, for a better expression. Yeah. And then kind of post that, things have just started to slowly come back and, you know, we're back to a market, which a lot of people would say is, um, you know, back to the pre-COVID or, or even better again, mm. possibly. And so, yeah, it's been been a, been a long year, but it's um, moving into some pretty good signs as we come into Christmas and the new year. 
Well, I guess then with um, stock actually down 20%, it's not exactly good news for purchasers because they've obviously found it exceptionally hard to find properties that suit them at the moment. And I guess maybe some uh, vendors are still going, well, you know, I need to buy to sell, but I can't buy to sell because there's nothing to buy in order for me to sell. You know, it's just this. Yeah. You know, someone's <laughs> trying to get my head around that, John. <laughs> yeah, I, I, said very that spe- I said that specifically to be silly, but um, effectively, you know, some people, though, they might be waiting, um, you know, waiting for things to settle a bit more or, um, you know, that little bit tentative about putting on the market because they're afraid because there's um they're not going to have something to buy so you know someone's got to go first yeah and looking at that, and that that's the hard decision i guess you know we look at all the information we have all those stats that are there in front of us and everything's pointing to that it, it, it is a good time to sell yeah um you know listings are down but our inquiry is quite strong still although mm-hmm. the in- inquiry is probably slightly different in terms of where it's been coming from um in comparison to where we were last year it's uh it's definitely more of it there so very positive Absolutely. You've brought your laptop along today, so I always get excited when I see spreadsheets and yes. stats. Like, I love the graph number. What are some of these exciting numbers that we've been able to discover, I guess? Yeah, look, w- without going into too much um, analytical detail, we'll just kind of cover um, a bit of an overview there. What we've kind of tracked right through that kind of COVID period, when you look at, um, you know, our local area here in that Glenorchy LGA and, and that whole statewide, we've had a lot of in, a lot of people from Victoria searching, but not going well, that Probably because they've been stuck at home for so long. <laughs> nothing else to do but from scroll yeah, the websites. Exactly. Yeah, could be um, could be a good part of it. <laughs> you know, like forty five percent of people that have searched in Glenorchy are from Victoria. Or they're jealous that we've How been forty five forty five percent. Forty five percent. Yeah, kind of through that. Okay. Um, that that's the last kind of three months that we've been looking at there. Wow, just an idea. Okay, yeah, so crazy. So it's like so in the la- the last you know um, three months now. So when Victoria was on real strict restri- um, restrictions, etc. Mm. Yeah, we're right. Okay, but look, that's the, that's the figure of how many in that period. But that's stayed mm. the, the same right through the last six months. Okay, um, it's been exactly the same. That that Victorian search has been quite strong. Um, then followed by t- TAS search, internal TAS search, and then New South Wales, and very much the same from a statewide point of view as well. Yeah, that's crazy. I would not have thought that Victoria was going to be the big city that was looking into Tasmania, I would have assumed New South Wales straight off the bat. Yeah, look, and we see a fair bit of that. And then when you, when you go to the next step, though, and you look at, okay, well, that's the search, but what's happening after that? Where's the mm. inquiry coming from? It's mm. a different story again. 71% of people that have inquired are actually from within inside of Tasmania. Yeah, yeah. So that doesn't surprise me. That's, that's been a big figure. Mm. Yep. Yeah. A big figure. Must be a lot of Victorians that left the state for work opportunities and now maybe you've seen the opportunity to come back. Obviously, industries have changed now, work yep. from home, internet's better, so you can do a lot more remote work. Very so much it gives so. you a little bit more flexibility. Yeah, and that's that's the big point you say there, Pat. You know, things are changing through COVID. You know, where people can actually work from is different. Mm. We've been looked at as this little island bubble as well during that whole period. So the, the safety net. <laughs> <laughs> a movie about that later down the track. <laughs> <laughs> look, it's um, it's an interesting one. You, you look at kind of this time um, last year versus um, versus this year, and we look at kind of Glenorchy as an idea. Taz's inquiry is eighty two percent of the Glenorchy inquiry. Mm-hmm. New South Wales ten percent. Yeah, okay. Um, and then the other states follow there f- from there. Whereas the same time last year. Uh, New South Wales was closer to twenty percent, so that has dropped off um, a mm. considerable considerable amount. Yeah, it's a big difference when you look at it like that. It's in, it'd be um, I know with. Like I said, we won't go too bogging down into it. But <laughs> why you don't like numbers? Well, no, like interpretating, interpreting of it, interp- interpreting it. Um, but where then? It'd be interesting. Depending upon the advice, where different states, you know, if people from interstate are looking for opportunities in terms of investment, you know, are they heading north of Queensland? Are they moving to Victoria? You know, South Australia. Look, be interested to see then if the states have changed their tune as to where they're inquiring on. It'd be one. It'd be interesting to see then why that was the case. You know, is it um, are they seeing that prices are rising now? They they don't want to be. They, they thought they've missed the opportunity to take advantage. So they're looking for the next um, place yeah. to get quick capital growth. Um, so I'd imagine, um, um, so yeah. <laughs> I was just letting you hang yeah. out to dry there, John. <laughs> I was Thanks like, so, yeah, I know I'm, he's going with this. Yeah. But, you know, Aaron, if you're editing, you can cut that whole section out. It's pretty shit. <laughs> No, <laughs> I think what you were trying to say was yeah. that 
different people get information and they see opportunities in different states and they want to capitalize on it and that changes as the price changes and then that can affect how many people are searching in a certain area. Yeah, absolutely. I knew yeah. where you were going. Thank I you. just wanted to yeah. see if you could save yourself. And <laughs> <sorry>. Not today. <laughs> uh, overall, you've said the sort of the increase has been pretty dramatic right across the state from inquiry level. Yep. What other sort of data have we discovered? Yeah, look, if you look at that, um, that statewide side of things um, and, and just touching on where the inquiry is coming from again, just to kind of round that out a little bit from a, a statewide audience, you know, this time last year, um, TAS had roughly about 57% of the inquiry in, inside TAS. And then we moved out to New South Wales at, at 24%. It stayed relatively the same as a state for this year, though. Okay, so um, Tasmanians are still searching for properties. Yeah, so it's it's 66% of the TAS inquiries been um, Tasmanian still. Mm. Yeah, um, cool. With New South Wales at 17% and the other following there. So there's not a, not a dramatic change there from a statewide point of view. Yep. But the big thing that we do see, though, is, you know, rounding out this this conversation, you look at uh, what we've touched on there from a search point of view, what we've touched on from listings point of view, inquiry itself is up and, yeah. and quite okay. considerably. Well, that's good. Um, just as an example that, that I've got here for you, at the same time last year, we have, um, we're up 43% for the, the Glenorchy area, just as an idea. So Glenorchy's had 43% more inquiries. More inquiry. That's yeah. over, over a 12 month period uh, or over a six month period, six month period I did period. here. So yep. I, I looked at kind of when, you know, we got through the end of the financial year of June. Yep. COVID had kind of finished for us for, wow, for that's, a better term. That is really crazy when you think about that, that we're up that much. Yeah. And so there absolutely. is obviously a lot of confidence coming back into buying in the area. So yep. obviously people mm-hmm. are starting to feel more confident about their job positions and their security and then they're now feeling a bit happier to explore. Yeah, that's a good good point. I hadn't thought of that. Like I said, they're, they're, they're feeling more confident about their job position. Well, people don't buy unless they feel feel safe in what they're doing on yeah, day to day. Yeah, absolutely. So, yep. Yeah, if the, you're getting such a massive increase in inquiries just in Glenorchy alone. Mm. And a lot of it's local inquiry. Uh, as we've touched on, yep. um, you, you know, we're always we always have a very strong interstate base for our inquiry as well, mm-hmm. um, and that's been a bit slower. We've yep. just started to see that start to pick back up again now, though. That yeah. um, our borders have started to open up again, yeah. so it's really really encouraging for, um, for us locally. A couple of a couple of comments that the buyers agents that we'd had on these last couple of episodes was a lot of their their inquiries that they're getting. I mean, they can only take on a, you know very few few clients, but be, some of the things because they've had such a hard time securing property that now they're engaging professionals in order to make that happen. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if a lot of the interstate people that were inquiring just got burnt out from being beaten actually by locals. Which um, is a nice change because a couple of years ago, a local couldn't buy a property to save themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yep. How the times have turned. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've taken it back. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that is an interesting thought though, because buyers now they're thinking, oh, we, oh, we just get beaten, get beaten by people from interstate paying cash and blah, blah, blah. I was like, actually, it's not the case where you're getting beaten by locals when it comes to negotiating a property. Mm. So, Well, that's good for anyone that owns a house in the area. If you're thinking about selling, it sounds like you're probably in a really good position to – to get a good outcome at the moment. Yeah, 100%. Well, d- definitely at the moment, Pat, because, you know, there, there's not as many houses out there to be mm-hmm. sold. Um, so you're not competing against as many people as you w- normally would be yeah. to try and get that sale. But there is more people yeah. looking for property. So that's supply demand. Yeah, we work on buyer's market, neutral market, or a seller's market. And yep. what you're describing is very much so a seller's market where a seller should be able to achieve an exceptional result because there's more buyers fighting for that one yep. property. Yep. Yeah, so that's really good to hear um, and really good positive news, I guess, in what can be seen as a pretty negative year for a lot of things. Yep. Well, we, we, um, uh, we've been going through the process at the moment at this end of the year of reaching out to a client saying, hey, look, um, time for an annual checkup um, because so much has changed. And figuring out a – because we try and look at a few different indicators when assessing what a fair market price might be. You've got, you know, sale price versus capital valuations in the area. You've got comparable sales. You've got summations. So you're grabbing, you know, uh, you know estimated land value plus house value. But then the um, one you just can't, you know, really pick is it's the, the market competition value. Um, and that's where you're positioning your property where you think it might – you know, attract interest, and then who knows where it's going to go. Well, what do you call that? The X factor, John. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd run with that. Yeah, it's the X factor. That's good. I thought of that, mate. Um, but but that's um, so. Sometimes too, so many stories now. It's like, oh, the property sold five 
five percent, ten percent above market, or you're going it was fifty grand above or a hundred grand above. Um, and you know, from us as a professional standpoint, that's just something that's really hard to gauge because you just don't know when the market's leaning into this depth of competition, like you're referring to, like fifty percent extra inquiry. It's an exciting place to play, but even from us, then it's just well, how do you navigate that? Well, it's 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 an interesting one. It's interesting. Mm. No, very much so. But very exciting times, and what looks like will be a bumper 2021 by the sound of it. Yeah, I, I don't. It'd be well considering what we've still got the lowest interest rates that have ever happened. So money's really, really cheap. And well, it looks like from what you described, Jason, no one's going to be losing their appetite for property anytime soon. And given the fact that Tassie's become more popular than ever, and everyone can seem to share the story that you know we used to get bagged out, but everyone wants a piece of the state these days. So it doesn't seem to be slowing at this point. Not at all. It just seems to be pushing, um, pushing through and strength to strength, really. Um, so it's, it's really, really good for us. But is there, is there any, um, was there anything that in your research now that really surprised you or is it something that you could, you could obviously see on a day-to-day basis? Not necessarily anything that, that is, is really surprising. I mean, to be in the market we're in now, if you had have asked me that six months ago, kind of during those kind of COVID months for a better term, mm. I'm surprised we are where we are. Yeah, okay. Oh, geez, back um, in March, I thought I'd be getting rid of half our team, unfortunately, yeah, and like yeah, really, yeah. it was really. Yeah, uh, yep. I had no idea how I was going to keep all our staff employed back mm. in March. So just it's a to scary see, time. Yeah, where we ended up is just amazing in such a short period of time. Uh, and I think that's the key as well. There, what you just said there, Pat, is such a short period of time. Mm. You know, like it, it seems like forever ago now, but it's not that long ago. Mm. No, you know, it's not that long ago. No, that's exactly right. So to turn what was doom and gloom eight months ago into what appears to be at this stage quite a, a buoyant market and what appears to have a lot of growth is quite remarkable, really. Well, it reminds me of that image where you get a spring and you just like you compress it right down to a point until it has to explode again. And it's probably it's almost like that where everyone just got forced to stop doing things and then now that lid's been taken off, the spring goes boing and it hits, hits the ceiling. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I, I, I like that. I like that. <laughs> that that's him being nice, Johnny. He's just thinking about it. Yeah, no, 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 just what, whatever, it. whatever. Oh, you, you got some crackers today, John. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty much swinging and missing every time. <laughs> he's, he's, he's hard on you, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he's just got high standards. He, he looks this out for the best. This is a respectable show yeah, we're yeah. running here. <laughs> Actually, I have to admit, I think Aaron does hold us together. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of missing him today because John and I are loose cannon. So <laughs> sorry that he's not here today, Jace, but hopefully we can pull something together out of this episode. And so with, so effectively these numbers are looking at right up until today at this point. So it's the July through to the November or what? Um, yeah, so uh, what d- different about? parts there are broken up in different ways just because how I can try and extract the information. Yep. Um, but that, that inquiry that we're talking about being up, that's over the last uh, – back to 1st of July. Yep. So uh, kind of that period there and, and those listings, we've just captured those from um, the last three months. But it still paints that picture for us. Yeah, see, that that's interesting about that because traditionally we find that, you know, um, especially in southern Taz, you've got these um, – our hottest up months, generally speaking, end up being September, October, November – and then you're looking at sort of February, uh, February or February, March, April, um, and then you get that, which makes sense because then you got that, um, you know, pullback during winter. Like in terms of cyclically, if you look over the years, that seems to be the case. But I, with that, though, if the opposite is true this time around, where we've got less people on the market, but nearly, you know, you know, fifty percent more inquiry, um, that's probably, it, you know, we, I couldn't even tell you the last time if that's ever happened in um, Tassie's market before. Um, there's a lot of less properties that you're implying are on the internet at the moment. And look, we see it on a daily basis yep. too. Like yeah. we all know that we're not running as much stock as we normally would in the office and the yeah. things that we are getting sell relatively fast as a result. So yeah, I guess it's no surprise to us, but it might be surprising to a lot of people to hear that there's not that much for sale and people that are sitting on the th- fence thinking, do I sell, do I not sell, sort of worrying, I guess, whether or not now's the right time. Yep. I think they'd be surprised to hear that they'd actually probably do really well at the moment. I think they really mm. would be. Yeah. Um, and, you know, media plays a part in that as well. We've had probably, you know, what we thought would have been our, our toughest year. Mm. Um, it hasn't ended up being too bad. Yep. But what, what we hear from external factors is that it is still pretty bad mm. a lot of the time. Mm. So mm. for anyone out there that's just, um, you know, sitting on the fence or thinking, oh, you know, c- could I sell, should I sell? Maybe, maybe not. It is actually pretty, a pretty good time to be out there in the market. The best thing you could probably do is just get someone out to have a chat. Yeah. yeah. Find out what you're sitting yep. on. It might actually surprise you. You might not realize that you've had such a large equity growth in maybe a short period of time and you're sitting on something that allows you to make that next step. 
Yeah. So I think um, if anyone is listening and they are sort of thinking about it, I'm, look, John and I are a real estate agent, so we want you to sell your house with us. But at the end of the day, <laughs> just get some information. The best thing you can do is be informed about what you're sitting on. And obviously you touched on it earlier, John, that that's what you're trying to do just by mm. giving people just what you called a health check, I think it was. Yeah, yeah a health check, annual checkup, that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 So just to give people an idea of where they sit. They might not even decide to sell their house, but they know they can go refinance then and go do something fun. like Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, And I think too, you know, you can be strategic in the way that you sell your property in the way that the contracts are drafted up. If then, um, you know, you are concerned that you, you can't, you're not going to be able to find your property. Well, I mean, there's such an excess of demand for buyers at the moment. So they're going to, they, they'll allow themselves to be a bit patient. So um, if you're worried about taking the first step, well, there are ways you can protect yourself as well. Um, and like the, you know, doing those checkups and then having that conversation is a really good place to start. Mm. Yeah, that's exactly right. And look, at the end of the day, if you do decide to go to market, I'm sure if you utilize services like Domain and their their premium products, you'll get an exceptional result, won't you, Jason? Of course you will. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a really interesting look into what's happened this year. Obviously, it's definitely different to how we thought it was going to be, but it's been great having you on just to get a feel for it and to get an understanding of it. Um, obviously, people can find out about Domain just by going to domain.com.au. They sure can. Beautiful, mate. And obviously, if you are thinking about selling, just reach out to your local real estate agent because they can tell you all about the products that are available on their website. Absolutely. Beautiful. Well, thanks heaps for coming in today, Jason. It's been really good just to get you in and get a bit of an idea. And hopefully we can get you in again in 2021 and go through it all again. Thank you for having me. Yeah, look look forward to coming back. No problem at all. Easy done. All right. Well, that was an interesting look as to how things are happening. Yeah, that that the idea that inquiry has increased like what fifty percent, and then across the state, listings of you know available properties are backed by twenty percent. So, like, that's pretty significant numbers if you think about it. Yeah, I can't believe twenty percent less properties for sale in all of Tasmania. Yeah, and if you yeah. think about that, just on a whole, like our agency, we sell what do we sell about twenty a month. Something like that, yeah. yeah. And we're only one of what? How many agencies in the state? There'd be forty agencies, fifty agencies in the state. Well, that, yeah. I mean, that means that I'm, I'm assuming that it must be nearly a thousand plus less properties that are available for people. I would have thought so. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. huge numbers when you think about it like that. So yeah. yeah, yeah. No wonder people are struggling to buy something at the moment, and when something comes up for sale, people will jump on it quick. Yeah. Because they they know that if they don't, someone else is going to. Well, and that's backed up by I mean the, the numbers of inquiries we're personally getting, the, the conversations we had the buyers agents yeah um and then even just again back to anecdotal stories but actual experiences that buyers are reflecting on us where they're just almost exasperated and sometimes they've had a they've had, they've had a break and then they're coming back and they've found out that, that there's nothing's better even after this break yeah mm. well obviously it sounds like 2021 is going to be a bumper roller coaster ride so i'm looking yeah. forward to strapping in yeah yeah it's i know some people were having conversations with me at the time when covid was like look how is this going to affect everything it's like who knows and now we do, and it's just like it's just coming from strength to yeah, strength. Yeah, like if you'd asked me back in March, I would have been almost like you should probably sell now before it gets worse. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't think anyone predicted the opposite of what happened. No, and look, fundamentally, that would have been the right decision if you had to move back then. But yeah. three to six months later, well, there you go. Yeah, amazing. Mm. Oh, well, somehow we've managed to string about a 25-minute episode together. I don't know how we've done it without you, uh, Rock Aaron, yeah. but look <laughs> – for all those guests out there, Aaron will be back on the mics next week, so yeah, don't yeah. stress Nan, he'll be back. <laughs> but I think we're probably going to wrap it there before we say something we shouldn't, John. I think that's a great <laughs> idea. Well, with for me, allowing me to do the intro, thank you again, everyone, for listening. And we, as we always forget, like, share, and all that kind of social media stuff makes a big difference. And uh, we're really looking forward to be, being back next week. Thanks, guys. See ya. All the best. You have been listening to The Property Pod, recorded and edited by 414 Media House in conjunction with 414 Property Co. This podcast is general information only and the thoughts and views expressed is the opinion of our panel and listeners should always seek then use their own investigation into any topic we discuss to ensure they fully understand their own situation. It does not constitute and should not be relied on as purchasing, selling, financial or investment advice or recommendations expressed or implied and it should not be used as an invitation to take up any agent or investment services. No investment decision or activity should be undertaken on the basis of this information without first seeking qualified and professional advice.